Morning, everyone. Morning. A lot of chatter today, which is good. Excellent. Very, very warm welcome to everyone in church this morning on what is a lovely sunny Sunday morning. And, to also, and also a hello to everyone watching at home as well. So, hello. Um, I've got a few messages this morning. So, the first one is a message from the Nottingham and Derby Methodist District from Reverend Andy File. <clears throat> and he says, Dear friends, a huge thank you to all our presbyters, ministers, apparently, uh, deacons, local preachers, lay workers, office holders, and volunteers who have worked so hard over the Easter weekend delivering services, pastoral care, reflections, prayer meetings, flowers, and perhaps even the odd Easter egg too. The Nottingham and Derby District is hugely proud and grateful for all the work that goes into celebrating our festivals and keeping our churches and chapels connected to each other and the communities we serve. With every blessing, Andy. That's nice. Uh, the second one is this, the signing sheets, this, the uh, signing sheets for, in the foyer for the community supper tomorrow, which is at five o'clock. Everyone welcome if you fancy coming along. Put your name down on the sheets in the foyer. So that's that for tomorrow night. Uh, and speaking of the foyer as well, um, have a look at the Faith and Light boxes, which were made yesterday. Uh, they carry a very worthy message uh, on both sides, so go and have a look. Not now, in a bit. <laughs> I, uh, after, after coffee, and that's my fourth one, I think that's my fourth message. Uh, so yeah, coffee in the main hall afterwards, again, everyone welcome. So before we welcome Monica this morning to, uh, to lead us in service, can we have a short prayer? God of grace, thank you, Lord, that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that as we meet to get together today, we're able to join Christians across the world as we continue our prayers for peace wherever there is conflict and suffering. And we continue to pray for those of us closer to home struggling to make ends, who are struggling to make ends meet. Please be with Monica as she leads us in service this morning. Let us be filled with your love and spirit and inspire and lead us in our time together. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Well, we're still in the Easter season, so part of our worship this morning will be looking at one of the Easter stories, and another part of the service will be looking at a story from the Acts of the Apostles, which is about the disciples just after Pentecost. Um, but mainly, we're going to be focusing on our mixed emotions, mixed emotions. I don't know whether you come together today feeling happy, sad, frustrated, whatever, but we'll have a bit of a think about that as the service goes on. A prayer of approach, let us pray. Risen Lord, open our ears to hear you speaking to us in Scripture. Open our eyes to see you in the ordinary. Open our hearts to be aware of our emotions. And may we know your presence with us in this time of worship. Amen. What I also should have said is that we've got the pleasure of the children being with us all morning, so we look forward to that and involving them in the service. Now, before I go any further, I've got a piece of good news. A piece of good news. We have, over Easter, been collecting money for Woodland Trust, and we have raised £3,000. <laughs> so I think we should celebrate that. Have we got some boys who can do us a drum roll? Whoa, all girls, yeah, but I was thinking particularly of two boys. Um, I tell you what, Helen, whilst we um, sing the first two songs, if you could prepare the boys, and then we'll do a little drum roll after we've done... And girls, sorry. <laughs> I knew I'd get it wrong. It's a good start, isn't it? Um, me of all people as well, not to include the girls, Girls and boys will do a drum roll. Right, 
Start again, Monica. Right. And then the other thing to mention, um, and Audrey's asked me to mention this because you know where my heart is with All We Can, the charity All We Can. One of the teenagers who is part of the dancing school, I'm looking at Audrey because she's going to go know if I get this wrong, um, is helping to raise money and awareness for this charity as part of her Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award. And on the 11th of May, she's going to be providing us with um, scones and cream and jam as part of a community coffee. I'm still looking at Audrey, yes? Yes, that's right. Um, and she's even going to be packing some of them up into boxes that you can buy to take home, all right? Please put it in your diaries. Um, for the next few weeks, it will be on the notices before service, but the 11th of May, 11th of May, to come and support Claudia and support all we can. I will certainly mention that again before that date. Right, so I've done those two. That's all right, isn't it? I've got that right. We're going to sing now. We're going to sing, and we're going to sing this joyful Easter tide, followed by all I want held dear, all I once held dear.
ready. So for the three thousand pounds that we've got from the Woodland Trust, we're going to now have a rum roll. <laughs> Wonderful. And that leads very nicely into our prayers of thanks. So let's pray. <coughs> Living Creator God, may we see your hand and your presence in all creation. In the trees and the fresh green leaves on the trees, in the pinks and whites of spring blossom in the bird song of a dawn chorus, in water as it gurgles out of a tap, in the chatter between friends, in jokes and laughter shared, in our worship songs and our prayers, may we see your hand and your presence and say thank you and praise you. Living God, we praise and we adore you. Amen. So, I wonder how you are feeling this morning and what mixed emotions you might have had during the week. I'm just going to give you a minute or two to talk, if you want to, you can think on your own, that's absolutely fine. But if you want to, just talk to the people around you and just name one or two emotions that you have felt in the week. You don't have to give a reason at this stage. Um, just share one or two emotions and then I'm going to get you just to shout out one or two emotions that you have had during this week. Got that? Okay. So have a conversation with each other. What sort of emotions have you faced this week? ready to share? Have people got one or two emotions that they can share? Have you got something to say, Warren? Have you got something? Yeah? Right, so we're just going to listen now to each other. Yeah? One or two emotions that we might have had this week, so just one word, yeah? Go on then. Anxious, right, anxious. Is this on? Is it working? No. Oh, it is now. It is now, because John switched me on. Would you like to say that again? Being... Oh, no, I'm going to relax. No, 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 no. Anxious, yeah? Anxious. Being anxious. That's right. How many of you have felt anxious at some point in the week? Lots of us, you see, so you're not the only one. Lots of us will have felt anxious. Any others? M Margaret? Thankful. Thankful. How many people have felt thankful this week? Yeah. Right, so lots of us have felt thankful. Others? Come on, other ones. We got anything over here? Oh, Irritated. Irritated. <laughs> How many of us have felt irritated this week? Right, so that's a common one, isn't it? Thank you. Have you got one over here? Yeah, thankful. Um, first, thankful. Yeah. Second, I was tired. Tired. I was like in a rut and I was like feeling blah yeah. and everything. And then sometimes emotionless. Emotionless, blah. right. Okay, that's a good one, isn't it? Right, we've got any others? We've got some over here. Relieved. Relieved. How many of us have felt relieved at some point this week? I think that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, relieved perhaps when something's not been as bad as we thought it was going to be, or we've got through something difficult. We've got something over here. Is that hand waving or not? Joy. Joy, come on. Joy. Joy. Who's felt joy this week? Yeah? Yeah, joy, right. 
come on, let's have one or two more at the back here. Why should you get missed out? Hope. Hope. Right, who's felt hope this week? Yeah, hope. Right, any, any, any more to share? We've got some down here. Oh, Carolyn, yeah? Amazement. Amazement. Who's felt amazement? Yes, lots of amazement. Yes, boy. Joyful. Joyful. I think you've been joyful, haven't you? Happiness. Happiness. Who's felt joyful and happiness? Wow. <laughs> Sorry? Sadness. And sadness. Yeah, we need to say sadness, don't we? How many of us have felt sadness? Lots of us, haven't we? Sorry? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Jill. Last one. Amusement. Amusement, yeah. I'm sure a lot of us have felt amusement. So what a mix of emotions we have felt. Let me just put this down. Now, I have got some emotions written on some cards here, and I could do with some helpers, girls and boys. <laughs> So the girls better come out now. <laughs> girls, come and help me, as well as the boys. Come on, Olivia. Well done, darling. Right. That's it. You come out as well, Owen. Right. Do you know what this big word here is? Frightened. So can you hold that one up for me, Olivia? Right, hold it up so they can, everybody can see it. And what's this one? Sur Sur surprised. surprised, surprised. Would you like to hold my surprise? Yeah, surprise. And joyful. joyful, you said that one, didn't you? So you can certainly hold that one. Right, and this one? Sad. sad. So you're going to hold up sad for me, Owen? That's it. And Fiona, do you want one? What's this one? Excited. Come on, Fiona, you come and have this one. Excited. Right. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to listen to a story that Di's going to read, and we are going to listen for those words that you've got. Excited, surprised, joyful, sad, and frightened. And we're going to listen for those words, yeah? When you hear your word, if you hear excited, you wave your card. If you hear surprised, you wave your card. If you hear joyful, you wave your card. If you hear sad, wave your card. And what have you got? Frightened, haven't you? So when you hear those words, you wave your card. And all the congregation have got to listen as well, because they've got to listen to die... And they've also got to watch when you wave your cards. So they can't go to sleep in this, can they? All right? They've got to really listen to the story. Right. Thank you, Di. The story is based from Luke 24, verses 36b to 48. The disciples were feeling sad because Jesus died on the cross. They were frightened and had been huddled together in an upstairs room. But some of the disciples were excited because they had discovered that Jesus was alive and had seen him as they walked along a road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They were, at, they were talking about this and sharing with their friends when Jesus himself stood amongst them and said to them, peace be with you. They were surprised and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you sad? Why do you doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It really is me. Look me over from head to toe. A ghost doesn't have muscle and bone like this. They were joyful and surprised, but still couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was too much. It seemed too good to be true. He asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. They were there and they were surprised when he took it 
and ate it right before their eyes. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. All the things written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms have to be fulfilled. He went on to open their understanding of the word of God. He said, You can see now how it is written that sad things happen and the Messiah suffers, but then there is joy when he rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations. Stating, starting from here, from Jerusalem, you're the first to hear and see it. You're the first witnesses. They had been sad and frightened. Now they were full of surprise and joy. They were excited that they were the first to hear and see Jesus and what a challenge to witness all these things. Didn't they do well? <laughs> Stay there a minute. Stay there a minute. Stay there a minute. Because we are now going to sing a joyful song. <laughs> Helen, would you like to come out and help? Yeah. Well, both Helens, actually. Um, <laughs> we are going to sing... Oh, it's all Helens. Look at it. Three Helens. <laughs> How many Helens would you like? No, uh, no, come on. Come on. Come on, help. Yeah. Um, a Helen. Oh, dear. Helen. A Helenly choir. Yes, okay. Um, we'll have a bit. So we're going to sing. Sing a song. Sing a joy, a cheerful song. Um, because I wanted us to do something in the service this morning that was really joyful. And these children made me feel very joyful on these today. So do you think we can do it again? Do you think we can really do some dancing and standing up and shouting? Stand, and we can do standing up, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to help us, Helens, yeah? Okay. Um, and, of course, our lovely music group. If you are able and you want to, please do stand. Please do stand. Children, 
Over in the corner over there, there is a poster that I'd like you to do. It needs some faces putting on it. Some faces with different emotions. So you could do a sad face. You could do a happy face. You could do an angry face. You could do a surprised face. OK. Um, and there's also some words to stick on, our emotional words to stick on. OK, thank you, Fiona. You can go and sit back down again. Thank you for your help. Um, and Chelsea is now going to come and read from the Bible for us. She's going to read for us a story that comes after the ascension of Jesus and after the disciples have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter and John, two of the friends of Jesus, are on their way to the temple for the mid-afternoon prayers when they see a lame man begging for money. It's another story which is full of different emotions. Listen for them. Expectation, excitement, wonder, amazement, determination. See if you can think of any others as Chelsea reads. Thank you, Chelsea. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 19. Peter heals a lame beggar. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as to John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. I should have said thank you to Di earlier as well. Thank you, Di. A prayer of confession, let us pray. Peter said, Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. As Peter taught, 
So we put this into action, turning to confess those things that we're sorry about. Our connection to you is often weak. We plan to pray more. We mean to think about you more. And we want to share our faith. We know that the reality is usually different. We find ourselves too busy to pray. We forget to think about you. We don't share our faith. Forgive us for our weakness and lead us to life. Our connection to you is sometimes broken because we would rather not have the burden of living up to your standards. So sometimes we keep quiet about going to church. We take advantage of another's mistakes. We avoid talking to people we find difficult. Forgive us for our faults and lead us to new life. As we turn to you, we know that our sins are wiped out. We know we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, amen. The last song that we sang was a very joyful one, full of bounce. This one's a quieter song, a quieter hymn, and I'm going to suggest we stay seated for it. God forgave my sins in Jesus' name. It follows on from our prayers of confession. On Monday, there was a solar eclipse over North America. We've got a picture of it here. I was listening to the radio on Monday as they were interviewing people who were preparing to watch it. But one woman was very frustrated because where she was, the weather was cloudy and she was going to miss out. But others, like the people in the picture, did see it, and they were full of awe as the moon passed in front of the sun. 
We couldn't see the eclipse this time as we were in the wrong part of the world, so we, maybe we felt frustrated as well. But maybe something else has delighted you or given you a sense of awe this week. For me, the spring blossom has been fantastic. Lovely pink and white blossom, which has given me great delight. And also yesterday, I went to an exhibition of miniature masterpieces by William Wigan, all done superbly in the eye of a needle. Tiny, tiny, tiny little sculptures that you could only see under a microscope. It's at Wollaton Hall. If you've not seen it already, go to be amazed. It's absolutely fantastic. And the story behind the man is fantastic too. It'll probably prop up in another of my sermons. Um, but I've also felt frustration. John knows that when I get my computer out and I'm trying to log in to a government website or something like that, well, he ducks because he knows I'm probably going to get fairly frustrated doing it, and that happened this week. So day by day, hour by hour, even minute by minute, our emotions change. We can change from feeling sad to joyful, frustrated to relieved. We can wake up in the morning feeling miserable, and then a conversation or a prayer time can change us to being hopeful and determined to make the most of the day. So I'm sure that all of us can relate easily to the disciples in the gospel story that we heard today. They were in an upper room. They've been moved from grief and fear to excitement and joy because the story we had was based on Luke's Easter account immediately after two disciples have got back to the upper room Telling the, telling the disciples who were there that Jesus has met with them as they walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus. For their part, the disciples want to tell those two that Jesus has appeared to Simon, the one who betrayed him. The one, sorry, the one who denied him. He's appeared to Simon. Can you picture the scene? They're all talking at once. They all want to tell their story. And then in the middle of it, Jesus appears. He appears, and even now, the disciples are frightened and think they have seen a ghost. Even now, they do not understand fully what is going on. But rather than being cross with them or berating them for their lack of faith, Jesus goes on to explain more clearly. He's not a ghost. He's flesh and blood. And he transforms the situation by asking a simple thing. He asks for something to eat. Something very ordinary in their culture. He's given a piece of broiled fish. And Jesus is present in the eating of that fish. What I hope that we can learn from that story is that Jesus comes to us and is present with us in the middle of situations that give us such mixed emotions as we described this morning. He comes to us as we try to come to terms with grief and with loss. He comes to us in the more ordinary events of life, whatever emotions we're going through. He comes as we eat meals, as we walk along a road, as we share with our friends. Jesus understands our human reactions. Why? Because he has been human himself. He doesn't berate us when it gets difficult. He comes alongside us when we find our faith waning or we're just struggling to recognise him. But those early disciples 
had been with Jesus right from the beginning of his ministry and had seen all that he'd done. They'd seen the healings, they'd heard the stories. And then they'd been witnesses to his death, a horrible death on a cross. And now, only days later, they're experiencing this resurrection firsthand. No wonder they were confused. But Jesus then encourages them to think in a new way, to reinterpret all the things that they've learned through his ministry, but also all the things that they've learned as Jews right from being children. All of that in the light of what is happening now. No, they hadn't still, they hadn't got it all sorted. They didn't fully understand what was going on or what resurrection meant. But Jesus trusted them, even them, with the task of being witnesses. And that was going to be vital if his earthly work was going to carry on. We weren't present at that resurrection, but Jesus still comes to us, I believe, as the risen Jesus and makes a difference in each of our lives. So we can be witnesses to our experience of knowing Jesus. It is easy to think, well, we've got to get it all sorted before I can tell other people about Jesus. Well, we might be waiting a long time. Jesus can use us just as he used those early disciples in our certainty in our confusion, in our joy, in our despair, in our challenges, he can use us to bear witness to our families, our friends, of what God is still doing in our lives, in our community, in our world. In our second reading, we saw Peter and John doing what Jesus had hoped and planned for and prayed for. They were carrying out his ministry. Again, there's a whole mix of emotions being played out, of expectations of the lame man, the excitement of him getting far more than he ever expected, and the awe and the wonder of the crowd, much the same as the crowds had responded to Jesus when he healed people. But as well as healing... Peter does show determination to be a witness, just as Jesus had instructed. He shows himself to be quite an opportunist. Given that people are standing around awestruck at the healing of the lame man, he sees it a good moment to capitalise. He's got their attention. He launches into a sermon. Well, I, for one, envy his ability just to preach a sermon just like that. It takes me a, a long time to write out, and I need my notes. He didn't have any notes. But thinking about Peter this week, I thought, actually, he must have had some fear and some trepidation in facing that crowd and being able to say what he wanted to say because he was fairly new to it. He'd been a fisherman. He wasn't used to talking in public. But I honestly think that whilst Jesus was alive, and whilst he was in that upper room, wondering what on earth had happened when Jesus died, and then all about the resurrection, I think he'd been preparing himself just for this kind of moment. And most importantly, like me, he had the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to lead him. Despite his interpretation of the role of his listeners and himself in Jesus' death, he doesn't condemn them, but he addresses, us, addresses them as friends focusing on how the risen Jesus had changed lives for good. 
So a challenge. Because again, from that second story, we are challenged to be like Peter and witness, not necessarily by preaching, but who knows, there may be people here who are called to preach. But like Peter, can we look out for our opportunities in our lives, in the way that we go about our daily lives? Can we find opportunities to speak about our faith in Jesus? They are actually often given to us. And it's up to us, with the help of the Spirit of Jesus, to say something, just some little thing, about what Jesus means to us. You may have very mixed emotions about doing that, but we can start where people are and we can answer questions or make simple statements about what, how, how, what helps us to cope with all those mixed emotions of life. And then we can leave it up to Jesus and the Spirit of Jesus to do the rest. So to sum up, let's be sure that Jesus meets us in all the mixed emotions of our lives and is, in, is present with us. He'll be present with you tomorrow. Whatever you are doing, however you are feeling, he will be with you in those mixed emotions that we will all face. And then he challenges each of us to be witnesses to all he has done and is still doing in our lives and in the life of the world. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can all do that. We're going to watch a video now. It's a video about street pastors. Street pastors go out into Nottingham on Saturdays and Sundays, and we have one amongst us. Andy is a street pastor, so if you want to know more about it, they can talk to you afterwards, can't they, Andy? Yeah? They don't go out to preach. That wouldn't be the right thing. But what we do do is go out and get alongside people. Get alongside people. So just watch this video and see what it says to you. We believe that Nottingham should be safe at night. Street Pastors started in Nottingham in 2010 as churches from across the city joined together to help make Nottingham a safe place. Volunteers from across 20 churches go out on the streets of Nottingham on a Friday and Saturday evening, caring for the vulnerable and supporting our emergency services. Whether it's handing out water, flip-flops or providing emergency first aid, our teams are there to help when someone's night out takes a toe of the worst. It's difficult to say what do street pastors do in one sentence, but we care for and love and support the people of Nottingham City Centre in the, in the nighttime economy. I'm very excited about street pastors because to me, they are the fourth emergency service. They are always there on a Friday and a Saturday. Being a street pastor has opened my eyes to situations that I may well have not been aware of before. I just love it. I love the atmosphere. I love people like coming up to me, having a good time, singing, dancing. And, you know, we're not there to preach, but just walk alongside them and help them. It's where Jesus would be. We don't pretend to be Jesus, but we're following in his footsteps. We really need to be where people are in need of support, in need of love and in need of care. If someone's in need and needs somebody to look after them, the police can safely know that the street pastors are going to be there and are going to be able to do that for us so then we can go and deal with other stuff within the city centre. I don't think it's just Nottingham that needs street pastors. I think all big cities need street pastors really, just as a presence around the city in the evening. I say they're invaluable. They can take that pressure off us. It's friendly faces that's around and they're needed because it's not just for us, it's for the city in general. We're wanting everybody to enjoy Nottingham's amazing nightlife safely. That's why we wanted to grow our teams. If you'd like to find out more on how to join our amazing team, please head to our website. So 
So you can go to the website, but you can have a conversation with Andy, which is always a lot better than going to any website. Let's just pray for Andy and all those street pastors. <coughs> Our loving God, thank you for the street pastors who week by week go into our city centre to support people where they are. Having a good time, but sometimes that goes wrong. So we pray for Andy. We pray for all the teams that go out week by week and we ask your blessing, your protection, your care on them. May they show love to those around them each time they go out as teams. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing again. We're going to sing the song, Listening God, You Hear Us When We Cannot Speak. <coughs> be seated. I wonder if I could have those the children and um, Fiona back here just to take hold of the words that I gave you. What was your word? Well, you, you were excited, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Right, do you want to just sit on, on, the, on there? That's it. Right. Do you want to come out? Are you okay to sit on the little step here? So, well, when you had the word sad, didn't you? Yeah, hold that. That's it. You just sit down there. Which word did you have? Frightened. You had frightened, didn't you? I had um, surprised. You had surprised, and you had joyful. Right. Okay. Now, um, Chelsea is going to help with the prayers this morning as well. So, if you'd like to come forward, Chelsea because we're going to concentrate on each of those words one at a time. Okay, so you listen for your word, but also listen to the different emotions and how that might affect people in our world. Before we pray, 
as part of our prayers, I just want to mention Brian Haller. Brian is now in hospital. He's in the city hospital. He has been quite poorly this week. So we do pray for him and for Andrew and Christopher and for Karen at this time. Please don't bombard Karen with lots of questions after the service. That's as much as we know at the moment. He's been well cared for um, by his family and, of course, by the hospital. So just make sure that we pray for him this week. So let's pray. We pray for those who today are facing a mix of emotions. And there is a response when we say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sad, particularly those who have witnessed terrible things, especially children in war zones, in places of famine, in violent homes. We pray for those who have been bereaved and are feeling loss and grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are frightened, those who don't know what tomorrow might bring, those who don't know if they will be the next victims of conflict, those who are worried about their health or the health of a loved one, those who are struggling financially, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are surprised. Those who find things are not as bad as they thought they were. Those who get an unexpected visit. Those who have unexpected good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are excited for those looking forward to something special, for those enjoying a new activity, for those cheering on the winning team. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those who are joyful, for those who have found the strength to get through a difficulty, those who have discovered a new way of looking at life, those who have found a deeper faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves. Whatever our emotions are today, whether we feel sad or frightened, surprised, excited, joyful, may we meet with you and know the fullness of your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring all these prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Right, now, you've got something to show us, haven't you? Yes, Helen? Have you got something to show us? Yes. Yeah. Right, well, so, shall we have a look what you've got to show us? Shall we show this first? Yeah, show that first. Show that first, yes, I'll Helen. I'll be the person. You can be the person to show. So, what have we got on here, children? What's it say in the middle? Can anybody read that for me? Peace be with you. Yeah, peace be with you. And who said peace be with you? Who said it to his friends? It was Jesus, yeah. And Jesus still says, peace be with you. When you are, what's this word? Frightened. Frightened. When you are surprised. When you are... When you are... And when you are right, and any other emotion as well, Jesus says, peace be with you. So I think we can give them a good clap, don't you? 
Right. And have you got something else that they've been up oh, to? I'll, I'll just tell people. Just yeah. tell us. Um, do you want to go over by the microphone? Then people can hear you. Thank you. Oh, the children are in the middle of doing something else as well. So they've done some faces with the different emotions on the poster. So do have a look at this afterwards, won't you? Because there's some super faces on here. And then they've done them on a curved surface. And we're going to put them on some painted spoons so that we can use them in Sunday school so that they'll last. And so we can look at different emotions, different feelings when we're reading the Bible. Thank you, Helen. So some week, when they're finished, show us. OK. OK. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, you can go, <laughs> go back to your places because, well, I think you might be playing instruments and stuff, mightn't you? And we're going to sing together. We're going to sing together over a thousand tongues to sing. Now, there's not a thousand of us, but you're in good voice this morning, so let's sing together over a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs> If you're able, please do stand.
Just as the risen Christ appeared to his disciples, bringing them his peace, may we know the peace of Christ and be his witnesses in the week ahead. Amen. And let's share with one another the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And a big thank you to the music people, to the technicians at the back, to the stewards, to the flower arranger, to Chelsea and Di for helping with readings, to the children, um, to the coffee makers, because we often forget the coffee makers, and the people who put out the table and chairs, which is inevitably Jane, and put them away again, which is all of us. Um, if I've missed anybody out, my apologies, but thank you to all, and thank you all for coming. And we can go and share refreshment and conversation and chatter with each other. And do have a word with Andy, if you're at all that's interested in being a street pastor. Amen. Go in peace. Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see. <laughs>